Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and last uh, video I told you that I was starting an experiment in uh, waterproofing paper mache clay. This is the armature for the sculpture that I'm going to be using for that experiment. It's the Scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz books. It was originally designed by W.W. W. Denslow. Um, I'm using actually two different um, illustrations of his in order to get this fellow uh, put together. It's almost ready. Well, actually, it is ready for the first layer of paper mache clay, and I'll show you how I got to this point. But first, <laughs> I want to brag a little bit. My new book, How to Make Tiny Paper Mache Dogs, um, is uh, now available out on Amazon.com, and I ordered my copy. It actually showed up yesterday, and I really like the way it looks. I know that a lot of people have already picked up their own copies, too, because Amazon has listed it. Um, at the moment, I don't know how this, this will change hourly probably, but right now it's listed as, as the number one hot new release in the uh, paper crafts section, which is really cool. Thank you, Amazon. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased a copy. If you'd like to check this out, look inside the book, uh, I'll put a, a link right down below so that you can go see what this is all about. Okay, now that that's all taken care of, <laughs> um, I want to show you how I got to this point. You saw a, f a fairly rudimentary um, inner form of this uh, armature in the last video. And now he's taken on a little bit more form uh, with some crumpled aluminum foil, a little bit of armature wire, a little bit of heavy wire uh, to, to kind of to stiffen him up a little bit and hold him in place. And I used also a little bit of, of, um, of the aluminum mesh that I had left over from the dragon. The one thing that I do want to mention is that I've tried to be really careful not to leave any dips, uh, any places where water would settle because if, if water sits into a crack or anything, even in a, even in a hard rock, when it freezes it'll pop that rock apart. So I do have to be careful with that. Now let me show you how, how I actually added the aluminum foil and all those other things to get them to this point. James Porter, who watched one of my videos out on YouTube, uh, said that he uses a threaded pipe embedded, say, in the leg or something of one of his sculptures, and then he's able to, use, uh, to thread it on to um, uh, a base, make it really solid, which would sound like a really good idea. I didn't happen to have a threaded pipe, so I used a um, an old curtain rod that was left here in the house, and I used some foam, like he suggested. If I did this again, though, I certainly would not use the um, the spray foam from the can. Um, that was totally my mistake. It, it's not intended for anything um, more than one inch wide. It says that right on the can. Instead, I would order some of the two-part foam that you can get from Smooth On or Brick in the Yard Company. So that was my mistake. Uh, I'm sure that James does not use uh, the can. Uh, he probably doesn't use a curtain rod either. <laughs> but in the end, it actually worked, and I was able to uh, stick the curtain rod down in a, um, a, a bucket of sand, and it stayed up so that I would uh, be able to actually work on it without it falling over. Uh, and now that curtain rod end is going to be embedded in concrete when I take it outside. Now that I can work on it standing up, I just started uh, adding some uh, aluminum foil just to fill in the spaces starting at the bottom and working all the way up. You could use crumpled paper instead, that's what I've always used before, but the foil is kind of nice on something big like this, especially if you've already filled in the, the major forms with something less expensive. Um, the reason being, as you can see right here, is you can actually get it to stay put uh, before taping it on, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it, it helps. Uh, you can um, put it around a, an area and it'll stay there. Uh, then you can work with figuring out where things go and how f how much you need to squish it and, and all that sort of thing and then tape it up. Uh, the taping it can be a little bit frustrating so any anything that will help uh, I'm, I'm gonna go for it. I added some heavy wire to the arms and to the back so that I would be able to change his posture and actually have him stay where I thought he belonged. Um, I did change the posture quite often, but the wire really helped because at least it would stay where it was until I changed my mind. 
The bottom portion of the scarecrow's jacket is a little bit ruffled, um, kind of gathered. And in order for that to look like it's uh, fabric, I used the, um, the aluminum mesh, a little bit left over from the dragon's wings. And I think it's going to work really well. I may have to take this off, um, do the rest of the sculpture, the, you know, the paper mache clay, and then put it back on again. Otherwise, I'm not really sure that I would be able to completely cover the armature. But I'm, I'm still thinking that it's going to work quite well because it does look like fabric and uh, the, the mesh really holds the paper mache clay really well. The armature is almost done at this point. He just needs some fingers and a thumb. Um, I'm using some really heavy aluminum armature wire. I'm just going to um, uh, tape that on there and then use some more aluminum foil to make the fingers and, and fill those out. I do want to leave just a little bit of the armature wire up at the top uncovered with tape because I want the paper mache clay um, to actually surround it um, just really hold those hands on really well. I didn't feel like I needed to get real um, you know anatomically correct on those uh, hands. I didn't I didn't spend a whole lot of time on them because a scarecrow's hands are just made with a glove filled up with straw so they're not going to be entirely accurate anyway. I did try to get all the thumbs and fingers in the right place <laughs> So now I've actually got him to the point where I can start adding some paper mache clay. I'm going to go mix some up right now and I'll start applying that soon. As soon as that is totally dry then we can start uh, adding the uh, the, the concrete sealer. I've ordered it already. It's not here yet, but it should be here by the time this is completely dry and ready to be sealed. As soon as that's ready, we can put it outside and see what happens. Uh, wish me luck. If you've done any kind of experiments on your own about uh, waterproofing paper mache clay or any kind of paper mache, I do hope that you'll let us know. And if you have anything, any projects of your own in paper mache, I do hope you'll come show it off on my blog, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.